Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Oklahoma State Sports Network. I am the Cowboy Big Crab, and I am joined by Brian this time. How's it going, Brian? Oh, it's going swell. It's going swell. Of course, I uh, wasn't quite expecting to make one of these before the end, before the start of the season 38, but at a special request of our franchise owner, here we are. All right, so today's episode of the of uh, the Oklahoma State Sports Network, we're going to talk about our play-in game. Yeah, I know, play-ins. That was a yeah, while ago. Oh, and uh, we've also got some other, some very early Season 38 news twisters related to talk about. But uh, let's just get straight into the play-in game where uh, we lost to the Sky Kings, and there's no stats about it to talk about. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're going to end that because there's no stats to talk about. Yeah, that's uh, that's a game you all forget anyways. Yeah, you can't. It's also how do you stretch out, uh, out um, uh, like a segment like this when you have no stats like at all, and you lost. Yeah, that's uh. Yeah, so probably gonna be one of the shorter episodes, but uh, the big thing we'd like to talk about today is uh how next season is gonna be looking. But I think just before we actually get into next season, we do have have to uh, quickly congratulate a member of the Twister of the Twisters for uh, winning an award last night. Oh yeah, oh yeah, big news! God love it, Twisters Nation, add on to the uh onto the pile. Yeah, mission getting. Hitting linebacker of the year, congratulations, Mission. Not to mention you got the Pro Bowl coming up here tonight. Right? And Samuel making the Pro Bowl, making the uh, first team offense. Mission making first team defense. And then second team wise, M13 making short cornerback. So congratulations to all Twisters making the making the Pro Bowl this year. Represent I mean, Oklahoma City well. No, oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we gotta be up there for Hall of Famers, or I'm sorry, not Hall of Famers. Sorry, I had that conversation last night. Uh, Pro Bowlers, uh, in terms of how many we actually have, uh, are, are we up there in terms of how many we people got, we got? We got th we got two first teams and one second team. Oh, all right, lovely, lovely. Yeah. I love that. No, but the big thing we are we've been our request to talk about is next season. Just let's. Uh, get the big storyline out of the gate Bailey coming back from suspension I mean if you had just watched any of the games last year you could tell that team was desperately missing Bailey Brian oh yeah uh you know I mean that that one so what, what was the last season I mean you know I I, I know I should know but let, let me get this straight I mean you know I, I tried to pile it in the back of my brain as much as I can but so we missed did we miss Bailey week one yeah because we had intaked because Bailey yeah. was going to uh, take that a break. That was the tight end Bailey game, yes. And then... We had I mean, to come week back two week was... two, was, which is when we returned to form. Right, and that week was... Week three is when, to, is when it all went to crap. Yeah, week two is definitely our, our best game, and that was with I'll give Bailey. Credit, I'll give credit where credit is due. Week three, Parker, starting quarterback, actually, actually competed with the runner-up in the Eastern Conference, the Empire State Sentinels. I mean, a six-point yeah. loss, yeah. and again, after you had just lost your star quarterback, that's right. not bad. And week four is when we, um, crap, who was our week four quarterback? I can't even remember. Uh, I believe it was Cursa. Yeah, Cursa, and then week five and six, we just, uh, just brought back Intaged, so... Yeah, so uh, you know, it's it's definitely that's exciting to have him back. I mean, personally, I I mean, I'll just be blatantly honest here. I I didn't think he was gonna come back. I thought it was gonna be a new era, but I mean, you know, I mean, I I think I don't think anyone should differ with this claim, but um, I I mean, I pretty much think it's Bailey's team. I mean, you know, almost almost keyword almost since birth has he been here and. I know, uh, I mean, th this can probably, I don't know if you had a, a plan going here, but this could probably lead us into our next segment. But Bailey, I believe, has all the franchise records in terms of 
Quarterback wise, he holds the most amount of passing yards of 8,920, most passing touchdowns of 117. Uh, one he definitely doesn't like to have, uh, most interceptions thrown of 19. So, oh, I, I, yeah, I think that's all, yeah, that's all of them. To, to be, to be, uh, fair though, I mean, that is because he has the longest tenure out of all of these guys, and, uh, I mean, that, that this is still an impressive stat line out of his whole Twisters career. Almost 10,000 yards. He should approach that with his return this season. And then almost 120 touchdowns with just uh, 20 picks in his whole Twisters career. So, I mean, do the math, but that's 100 more touchdowns than interceptions overall. So, I mean, that's, that's just incredible. I think, I think, uh, and yeah, I mean... Another thing is we did sign Bailey to a huge, huge contract. I don't remember the number exactly, but I, I do know it was off the charts, and he, he looks like he's here to stay. Uh, I, I think he learned he's got to, you know, just stay out of trouble, whether he was innocent or guilty. It's just, you know, but uh, it's I, I would definitely say it's Bailey's team. But, uh, of course, we've also got to talk about the Plains division as a, as a whole right now. And just looking at the quarterbacks that are in it, I mean, Brian, this is this is a tough division. So we'll start we'll start with the Twisters. we got Bailey, of course. For the Bruisers returning, it will be Clan again. Vikings getting Kamari back under center. And then for the Vikings and Toros, this is where it gets interesting. The Vikings, based on what I've got, it's going to be Jelly. Oh, wow going to be playing Stark, going to be uh, under center for the Vikings. And then for the Toros, the doormat of the division for the past few years, will be getting a uh, former Twisters wide receiver resparkled under center. Oh, man. Oh, Reese. Wow. Uh, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't the move I was expecting, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, hey, uh, mm -hmm. if I guess if the boot fits. Yep, so this is going to be a very... I'm very interested very to see that Toros game now with Resparkle, especially if it's here in Oklahoma City. Especially if it's here, that is, yeah. that'd be that's going to be a very interesting game. The Resparkle return game, but this time in a rival's uniform. It's like Brett Favre returns to Lambo, but Roblox and not as deep. Right. I uh, I, I will say this. Uh, um, you guys will definitely catch our record predictions. Uh, when that schedule does release, I want to make that known. Yeah, just, that'll just be our case. week one preview. As of right now, we got no no schedule, which is originally the time we were, I was planning on getting the stuff out. But a special request from Parker to get all this stuff out now. So just a little bit of a shorter episode, but just kind of a look, a very early look at season 38 for the Twisters. So I think that's probably where we're going to wrap it up to, up here for you folks. Representing the Oklahoma State Sports Network, I am the Cowboy Crab. And it's Justin Fields go. Not after last Sunday, he isn't. We were the uh. analysts for the Oklahoma State Sports Network saying so long, everybody. <laughs>